forward to SIMVBC. So now we're going to say in SIMVBC, <laughs> patients will get a machine breath. When it is time but when they trigger a breath it is their own volume as opposed to kicking in with a full machine breath. <clears throat> right. <laughs> but that makes me happy that you say that because some people don't get that it's that simple. That's the only difference. <laughs> So I'll draw it out. So if we were to draw it out like we did here, we'll say the same tidal volume 500 rate of 12. So we're going to have 500, our pressure varying. I can probably draw that a little bit better this time. So this is going to be 500, 500, 500, and with that rate, it's still the same every five seconds. With a pressure that can change, 27, 29, 25. So it's time, they're still going to get a full machine breath based on whatever rate you have set. The difference, yes, Mary? Is that third breath supposed to be a different shape? Okay. No, just, oh, okay. yeah. No, I just wanted to have it a lower pressure. So, but now my patient takes a breath over here in SIMV. The ventilator lets them take their own breath. So we're not kicking in and giving a machine breath. So over here, patient initiates a breath, it's a full 500, because that's what we're set at. Over here, patient takes a breath, it's their own tidal volume. Will it give you the waveform, though? Yeah. Just this little one, though. Um, Just so somebody's spontaneously breathing on the bed. Will it tell you what they're, what they're pulling? Uh-huh. Yeah, so let's say it's time again, then the machine will give one again. So that's a machine, this is patient. So it controls the volume on the machine breath right. only. It controls the volume on the machine breath only. Now, if my patient wants to take a breath, he doesn't have to. But that's where you have to be careful because if you set the rate too low and your patient's not breathing on their own at all, then you'd have a problem. So machine breath, if the patient wants another, takes, takes another one on their own, again, it'll be their own. So does their breath override the time breath? Or is that just for the same? No, they sync together. That's why it's called synchronized. So if, um, oh, people are taking pictures of me in this stupid shirt. <laughs> See what we've done? So one of the things about this is it's called synchronized because in the old days, we didn't have this word. It was just IMV. And 
so what would happen is if the patient took a breath, but the machine was ready to give a breath, it would stack it on top of it. Mm. So now there's a window, and if during that window of time, the ventilator goes, oh, the patient took a breath, but it's time for me to give one, it'll sync it with it so that you don't have the breath stacking. Does that answer your question? Okay. So that's why we have synchronized now. If you ever see the initials IMV, I used to teach it, but I've not seen it talked about in years, so I don't see IMV anywhere anymore. So now we just use synchronized. Yeah, I have to tell you guys, in reality, this is not a good mode. They use it, and I have to teach you about it, and you're going to use it, and it's on your boards. But um, the problem with SIMV that they've discovered over the years is that my patient is breathing on his own. He's laying in the bed. He wants to take his own breaths. But the patient also knows that the machine is going to be giving him a breath at some point as well. But there's no way for the patient's brain to know when that breath is going to be delivered. So the patients subconsciously or consciously or whatever, they try to sync with the vent on their own. And they can't. It's impossible. And so it actually causes more dyssynchrony or fighting the ventilator and problems and anxious and anxiety and problems than just not using SIMV at all. It's going to take time because everything in medicine takes like 10 years to evolve. <laughs> but in time, you're going to see this go away completely. So the idea behind SIMV, if you think about what's happening here, is I'm letting my patient breathe on their own some, right? We're over there, we're doing all the work for them. So what would, in theory, if you think about what we're doing, what would the advantage to this be? Weaning. Weaning, yes, exactly. So some places still do this is we start a patient in assist control because that's full support when we first put them on a vent. Then when we think they're ready to be weaned, not when they actually might be ready, but when we think they're ready. And when we talk about weaning, I'll tell you about all that. But we switch them over to SIMV. And then we slowly go down on the rate. And so we'll go 12, and then 10, and then eight, and then six. So they still only get the amount of breaths that you said. Right. So if you're down to six, then the patient's doing all the rest. And once you get down to four, then the patient's doing all but four. See why people have used it for weaning. The, the idea is it's letting the patient do all the work on their own, even though it's been flat out proven that this is not only the best way to wean, not only not the best way to wean, it takes longer that way. How many people are in the hospitals? What do you guys do every morning? <laughs> do we do a weaning trial? Yeah. Most patients, we do a weaning trial every day. Some of you aren't in the hospital yet, I understand, but we do a vent check. Right on. <laughs> we go have coffee. <laughs> yeah. You guys will see and learn that in most hospitals now, and the way it's supposed to be going in the future is that every patient gets a weaning trial every day as long as they meet the criteria, even if they're on assist control. Because we don't think patients are ready to wean, even though they are ready to wean. So the idea is you test some parameters. If the patient meets them, we try to wean them, as opposed to doing this archaic, and it is archaic, method to wean. So, but it is still used very commonly, so you have to know how to use it. So the other thing that comes into play solely in SIMV is pressure support. So along with, so let's be clear here. Remember I told you this part was going to be the same. So VT is constant and pressure will vary with changes in a decrease in compliance or resistance. That's the same thing over there with the machine breaths. So that happens in either one. <coughs> You can set the same things with the addition of pressure support. I'm going to write it just to help you guys out if you're taking pictures or whatever. Tidal volume is constant, pressure will vary. When there's changes with a decrease in compliance or an increase in resistance. So that's the same. We can set the same things so 
tidal volume, frequency, flow, flow pattern. But the one thing that's different that we can set specific to SIMV is pressure support. And then in SIMV only, we can add PSV or pressure support. <coughs> Yes, I did. Thank you. I was trying to make it all the same. Mm -hmm. So only in SIMV you can set pressure support? Right. SIMV only pressure support. Pressure support works right here on a spontaneous breath. Pressure support ventilation, PSV, that's how you, you'll see it on your vent as either PSV or PS for pressure support. It only kicks in when the patient breathes on It's only on the patient's spontaneous breath in SIMV. So there'd be no pressure support on this breath because that's not patient. And there'd be no PSV at all over here. Because that's machine. and I'll explain how it works and what it is. is used to augment or increase the patient's tidal volume. And you should think of it a lot in the same way that BiPAP works. So pressure support is just a pressure. So let's say, for example, my patient's spontaneous tidal volume, when we let him breathe on his own in SIMV, is 150. Is that really high enough? Mm -hmm. No. So pressure support will help increase that patient's tidal volume just the same way a BiPAP would increase a patient's tidal volume spontaneously breathing. So you add pressure to get the tidal volume where you want it to be, which is, so we're gonna increase pressure support to get a spontaneous tidal volume. Between five and eight mLs per kilogram of ideal body weight. Yeah. 
parts of the Smithsonian or Weaving Nation are you able to miss it? Is it spontaneous? Well, it's not totally spontaneous, but it allows spontaneously breathing. So yes, it's used for weaning. Oh. Yep. So in SIMV, patients can get their machine breath according to the rate, whatever it might be. And then when they take their own breath, the ventilator is gonna let them take their own tidal volume. And then if that is not enough on its own, we can add pressure support to increase the tidal volume. You know, the idea is if your patient's spontaneously breathing, they're doing all the work. They're increasing their diaphragm. I just said over time, we've seen that it actually makes them not as comfortable. You're better off just to let throw them in straight pressure support and let them breathe on their own completely. So, if your doctor orders ACVC and he adds pressure support on there, can you do it? No, because there's not a spontaneous breath. There's a patient triggered breath, but it's not spontaneous. It's a full machine breath. So SI, a PSV would have to be an SIMV. <laughs> the other idea behind pressure support is that it helps overcome the resistance of the tube. That's why it's kind of routinely used. But ideally it should be used to get a tidal volume where you want it to be. Not just because we've always, oh yeah, it takes about five of pressure support. That's just some magical number that came out of thin air. It's a number clinicians use all the time. Add five of pressure support. It'll overcome the resistance of that ET tube they have to breathe in. Okay, questions on that? No, you're good. Let's talk about PC, and that's probably all we'll get before the break. Which is one minute. Yeah, we're not going to get to PRVC till tomorrow anyway, so we'll make a new spot for it. <laughs> okay, let's, because I don't want to overwhelm you guys. Does this all make sense? Does anyone have any other questions so far? Make sense? All right, so let's talk about pressure control now. So pressure control. So now we're gonna have a set pressure. So let's say we're gonna do a pressure of 20. Well, let me ask you this so I don't end up writing too low because I know it's hard for people. If there's anybody that wants to get a picture, do you want to take a picture? And would you want me to race this so I'm up higher? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Does anyone want a picture that hasn't got one? Yeah. All right. Get a picture and then I'll race it and I'll put PC right here so we're not down too low because I need to make sure everybody gets it. 